I stumbled on this place quite by accident. I was on a walk one day and suddenly this ruin rose out in front of me. Initially assuming it to be a folly, a sort of fantasy building which was quite popular in the 17th and 18th centuries, I later found out that it was actually Howley Hall, home to one of the most important families in Yorkshire. This building was, at one time, magnificent. The 17th century antiquarian William Camden titled it as Ides Elegantissime, Latin for, roughly, Shrine of Elegance. So how did this once majestic building end up as a ruin? Now, in some ways this video is quite special to me because of how many links it has to my earliest videos in my embryonic stage, and though I cringe to watch them now because I know they're not to my current standard, hopefully they can still be interesting for you. Anyway, let's look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. The Savile family were one of the most important families in Yorkshire. As far back as the 14th century, Sir John Savile was made Sheriff of Yorkshire, and I'll warn you, there's a lot of Johns in this family, so if you get confused, don't worry. The family continued to play an important role throughout the centuries, with another Sir John Savile, this time from the 16th century, responsible for much of this area's prosperity. Perhaps the wealthiest man in Yorkshire at the time, he owned a number of towns and villages in West Yorkshire, including what would later become Kirkstall Forge. Between 1585 and 1590, he built Howley Hall. It was said to cost around £100,000. In today's money, that would be around £17 million. So he was clearly quite wealthy, and this house would have looked magnificent. But as you can tell, there's not much to look at now. So, what would it have looked like? Well, we can get some idea by looking at similar buildings from the time. East Riddlesden Hall in Keithley was built slightly later in 1642, but is in a similar style. Oakwell Hall in Burstall was built in 1583, but with later additions, and can also give us some idea. We also have contemporary drawings of the hall, which certainly show it as being magnificent, reminiscent somewhat of the 16th century Temple Newsome House in Leeds. In 1626, John Savile was made Leeds' first mayor, or alderman. His coat of arms, a silver shield with a black bend and three owls, was incorporated into the city crest. He lived at Howley until he died in 1630, aged 74. Succeeded by his son Thomas, we come to the next part of Howley's story. Sir Thomas Savile was a Member of Parliament and involved in quite a few squabbles of the day, including a rivalry with Sir Thomas Wentworth of Wentworth Woodhouse, one of the most important and closest advisers to Charles I. In 1642, for reasons which are a little unclear, despite being a supporter of the King, his behaviour became unpopular with the Royalists and, whilst he was away at Oxford, Howley Hall was looted by the forces of William Cavendish, Earl of Newcastle. Thomas seems to have been something of a Wormtongue-esque figure, who constantly tried to ingratiate himself with and influence the powerful and popular, and so he was probably seen as something of a nuisance. Though little damage was done to the building itself, many supplies were stolen, and later Thomas would try to petition the king for compensation, but this was refused. Later, he entrusted the hall to a relative named Sir John Savile of Lupsit, who, as a parliamentarian, allowed Sir Thomas Fairfax to use it as a base for his attack on Wakefield in May 1643. This prompted a retaliatory attack by William Cavendish on Bradford. Cavendish then marched on Howley, either to prevent an attack from the rear or as revenge for the attack on Wakefield, and, after a short siege, Lupsy and his forces surrendered and were imprisoned in Pontefract Castle. The hall, once again, was looted. It seems to have only suffered minor damage, though, as Cavendish used it as a base to launch his attack on Adwalton Moor. Another wing of the Savile family, located in nearby Thornhill, gave rise to Sir William Savile, another key player in the Civil Wars. A staunch royalist, he unsuccessfully defended Leeds from Sir Thomas Fairfax in early 1643 and was killed in battle in 1644. Howley seems to have survived the rest of the Civil War relatively unscathed, as Sir Thomas Savile retired there until his death in the late 17th century. His son James inherited the estate, but having no son of his own to inherit, 
When he died, it passed to his sister Francis, who had married into the Brudeneau family. It seems that this family had no interest in living in Howley, and it soon fell into a state of disrepair. By 1730, it was finally demolished by gunpowder, with the site used as a quarry for local builders, and much of the interior panelling sold off elsewhere. Over time, legends began to emerge about the ruins. One held that a passageway led all the way to Leeds, and that inside it was a chest of gold, guarded by a clucking hen. This clearly is not true, although well into the Victorian times, as shown by this illustration from 1886, it seems that the cellars were still accessible to the public and in good condition. In another tale, on the nearby Scotchman Lane, it said the notorious highwayman John Neverson killed a Scotsman, hence the name. But there is still one other surviving element of the old hall. About 200 yards away is the site of a much older hall called the Murfields Hall. It was presumably abandoned when Howley Hall was built as an upgrade, and it became the residence of the Chief Bailiff. That now is the Howley Hall Golf Club. So although this once magnificent house, which was the scene for so many key events in our past, is but a ruin now, at least for just a moment, it can be brought back to life again.